about to start my workout for today. All I'm using today is a set of 10 pound dumbbells. 10 pounds is a good weight for me, but you may need to use something lighter or heavier than that, depending on your strength, on your level of fitness, what you have available to you, and how hard you're looking to push yourself today. So please consider all of those factors when choosing your weight and to make the decision that is best for you. If you do not have dumbbells, that's fine. You can still do this workout right along with me. Look for household items that will work like a couple of cans of soup or maybe water bottles or shampoo bottles. You can fill them with water or uncooked rice, for example. I will also be using my jump rope today, but not until later. And if you don't have a jump rope, that's also fine. You can still do this workout right along with me. Um, I'll talk you through what to do if you don't have a jump rope in a few minutes. I will also be using a mat, so if you have a yoga mat or an exercise mat, you'll want to get that ready as well. If you don't have a mat, a towel will probably be fine. Very quickly before we begin, I'm going to walk you through all of the exercises so that you know what's coming up and you can do this workout right along with me, but if you don't need to see that, there are timestamps in the description box below the video, so if you want to just skip straight ahead to the workout, you can do that. If you want to see the exercises demonstrated and explained, then we will get into that right now. The first exercise I'm going to be doing is plank rows. Now, if your dumbbells are not flat on the bottom, like mine are, so if your dumbbells are rounded here, or if you are using household items like cans of soup or water bottles, for example, you're going to need to modify this exercise because I'm going to be down in a plank position with my weight on the dumbbells. And if your dumbbells are rounded on the ends, or if you are trying to put your weight on something that's round, like a water bottle or a can of soup, it is liable to roll around on you and you could fall and get hurt. And I don't want anyone falling and getting hurt. So let me show you the exercise the way I'm doing it first, and then we will go over um, a quick, easy modification that you can do if you do not have dumbbells that are flat on the bottom. So my dumbbells are here on the ground. I'm holding on to each dumbbell. I'm going to come back in a plank position with my weight on the dumbbells. Now I'm going to do a push up on the dumbbells. Lower your chest down to the ground. And now push the ground away, straightening your elbows and pushing yourself back up, keeping your body in one straight line the whole time. So don't allow your hips to drop down like this. If your hips are slightly elevated, that's actually fine. You're not going to hurt yourself that way and it will actually make the push-ups a bit easier. So don't worry about that too much, but ideally you wanna have your hips in one straight line. And then as I lower my chest down to the ground, just remember that the only part of your body you're trying to lower to the ground is your chest. So if you don't yet have enough strength to lower your chest all the way down to the ground and you can only get here, don't compensate for that by lowering your hips or your belly to the ground. And the other thing I see people do is to um, get frustrated that they can't get their chest down to the ground. So they'll come here and then they'll dip their forehead down to the ground. Don't do that. Keep your head still. The only thing that should be moving is your elbows as you lower your chest to the ground and nothing else, okay? So if you don't yet have enough upper body strength that you can lower your chest all the way to the ground, that's fine. You can shorten up your range of motion. If you can only come here, then come here and then push yourself back up. That's fine if that's your push up. Eventually, you will build more strength and you will see your range of motion increase and you'll be able to get your chest down to the ground. But until you're there, don't try to compensate for that by lowering your hips or your belly or your forehead or some other body part to the ground, okay? Keep your body in one straight line from your heels to your shoulders. And of course, if you need to do the push ups from your knees, that is also totally fine. In that case, you want to have that one straight line from your knees to your shoulders, but just keep your um, keep that straight line, keep the hips high, keep the core engaged and tight, and keep your head still, okay? So push up on the dumbbells, and then two rows. These are renegade row push-ups. So I'm going to row one weight at a time, just bending one elbow at a time and lifting the weight up towards the shoulder on that same side and then control the movement on the way down. Repeat that on the other side. So lift the weight, and then, now don't just drop the weight down, but control the movement all the way down, okay? And that's one rep. So one push-up plus two rows is one rep. So put it together, push-up, row, row, that's one, push-up, row, row, that's two. 
Now, if your weights are not flat on the bottom, that's fine. Just have the weights here on the ground. Do the push-ups with your hands flat on the ground. So either from your toes or from your knees, keeping your body in one straight line as you lower your chest down to the ground as low as you can, then push the ground away. And now you can pick up one weight at a time and row it. And then put this hand back so it's flat on the ground. And now pick up the other weight, row the weight, put it down, let go of the weight. Basically, you're doing your push-ups with your hands flat on the floor or the ground and then rowing the weight. But you are not holding on to your weights while you're in a plank position like this because I don't want the weights to roll around on you and I don't want you to fall and get hurt. Okay, so please use your common sense and be safe. But that is Renegade Row Push-Ups and that is the first exercise. There are five more exercises in this part one that use dumbbells. So for the remaining five exercises, water bottles or cans of soup, household items, um, or rounded dumbbells will work just fine with no modifications. So moving on to exercise number two, this is bent over rows. So for this exercise, start by making sure your shoulders are back and down, back, meaning that you wanna kind of feel like you're pinching your shoulder blades together and down, meaning away from the ears. So if you're like me and you constantly find your shoulders up here, push them down, away from your ears and push them back. That's gonna help keep your chest lifted high, which is what we want. You're going to bend over, these are bent over rows, so we need to bend over. You're going to do that by hinging at the hips. So push your booty back, Visualize like you're trying to touch the wall behind you with your booty. That is going to help, again, keep your chest lifted high and it's going to help keep your back flat and the weight in your heels, which is what we want. Make sure your knees are soft. Do not lock out your knees like this. You don't want your legs perfectly straight. Make sure your knees are slightly bent. So hinge at the hips, pushing that booty back and keeping your back flat. Okay, as you do that, you're going to let your weights drop in front of you. My palms are facing the front of my shins and I'm gonna be holding my weights like this. Okay, and then from this position, I'm just going to bend my elbows and row the weights, both weights at the same time. So bend the elbows and lift the weights up towards your shoulders. And then again, control the movement on the way down. So don't just let the weights fall down, but control the movement. So lift the weights and then control the movement as you lower the weights back down. All right, that's bent over rows. The next exercise I'm calling double peewees. It's a very simple exercise. I'm going to start by holding the weights in front of me. My palms are facing the front of my thighs. The back of my hands are facing you as I hold the weights in front of me and the weights are touching like this. Now I'm going to bring the weights behind me and touch the weights together behind me. Lightly tapping the weights together. So try not to bang the weights together. You want the movement to be controlled so that you're bringing those weights behind you and just tapping them together. And then you're gonna bring them back around to the front and tap them together again, making sure that you're controlling the movement so you're not banging the weights together, okay? So starting with the weights in front of you and then tapping them together behind you and then returning to the starting position is one rep. So it will look like this. One, two, three. All right, that is the third exercise. The fourth exercise is curls. I'm going to be doing three different types of curls. So let me show you each variation. And then when I um, go through the format and explain how everything fits together, I will explain how I'm incorporating these three different curl variations. You don't have to do all three. You can pick one that you like and stick with it. But very quickly, I'm starting with bicep curls. So I'm starting here in a neutral position, holding my weights next to me. Now I'm going to rotate my wrists so that my palms are facing you. You'll want to start with your feet about shoulder width apart. Again, make sure there's a slight bend in your knees. Keep those shoulders back and down. And now I'm going to lift the weights. I'm gonna bend my elbows and lift the weights up towards my shoulders and then control the movement on the way down. Don't just let the weights drop down. Okay, that's a bicep curl. So my palms are facing you. I'm bending my elbows, lifting the weights up to my shoulders and then reversing the movement. 
The next curl variation I'm doing is a hammer curl. So I'm going to return my uh, hands to my sides. And again, here, my palms are facing the outside of my legs. And now we're going to curl the weights. Think of the way you would swing a hammer. Okay, so my palms are now, this palm is facing that wall, this palm is facing that wall as I hold my weights and as I curl them up. So I'm going to, again, bend my elbows and lift the weights up to my shoulders and then control the movement, lower the weights back and down. And then finally, I'm doing reverse curls. So for my bicep curls, my palms were facing you. For my hammer curls, my palms were facing the outside of my thighs so that each palm was facing the opposite wall. For my reverse curls, I'm going to rotate my wrists so that now my palms are facing the front of my legs and the back of my hands are facing you. And we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna curl the weights up to my shoulders so that I'm starting in this position. My palms are facing the uh, front of my thighs. The backs of my hands are facing you. And from this position, I'm going to curl the weights up to my shoulders. And now my palms are facing you. Then reverse the movement, controlling the weights on the way down. Okay? So that is a reverse curl. So those are the three types of curls that I'm going to be doing. Um, you don't have to do all three. You can pick one that you like and stick with it. That's totally fine. Next is an Arnold press. So we're going to start by doing an overhead press. So bringing the weights up to the shoulders, my palms are facing you and my weights are up by my shoulders. I'm just going to straighten my arms and press the weights up overhead and then reverse the movement, controlling the movement on the way down, bringing the weights back down to my shoulders. And now from here, I'm going to bring the weights in front of me so that they lightly tap together. Again, I'm controlling the movement so I don't wanna bang the weights together. I just want to tap them together. So I'm kind of squeezing them together in front of me, squeezing those chest muscles. Then return to the starting position. So press the weights up overhead, squeeze them together in front of you. All right, those are Arnold presses. And the final exercise for this first part of the workout is tricep overhead presses. Now, if you want, you can do this by holding one weight like this, whether it's a dumbbell that you're holding with one hand on either end or your water bottle or a can of soup or whatever you want. Um, and then just, you're gonna start with the weight up overhead. And then from here, you're going to drop the weight behind you. And then you're going to press it up overhead. So I'm bending my elbows and letting the weight come down behind me. But from my shoulders to my elbows are staying straight. So glue those elbows to the side of your head you don't want to let your elbows come back when you drop the weight behind you, and you don't want your elbows to come forward as you lift the weight up overhead. So imagine gluing your elbows to the side of your head and you're just hinging at the elbows, okay? So from your shoulders to your elbows, you want to keep that perfectly still. Those are tricep overhead presses. I'm going to be using both of my weights for these. So I'm going to hold them together like this and do the same thing. So make the decision that is best for you. Um, the right amount of weight to use for that exercise is going to vary depending on your strength and on your level of fitness, what you have available to you, and how hard you're looking to push yourself today. So you have to check in with your body and make the decision that is best for you. Please don't push your body into doing something it is not ready to do. You need to make sure you're working to your own level. So you might want to start holding both weights together. And then if you feel like that is too much weight for you, you can drop one weight and hold on to one weight. It also would be a really good idea for this part one, where um, that's those six exercises I just showed you, where we're working out with dumbbells. It might be a really good idea if you have two sets of dumbbells to maybe start with your heavier set, as long as they're not too heavy for you, and maybe have a lighter set on standby so that as we make our way through this circuit, um, a total of six times, if the heavier weights start to be become too taxing for you, that you have the option of dropping down to a lighter set of weights. Okay, but that's part one. 
We're doing those six exercises, six reps of each exercise, and we're going to go through the circuit a total of six times. Six is the number for today. Okay, so six reps of each exercise, six times through the circuit. Now, for the curls, each time through the circuit, I'm going to do a different curl variation. So the first time we go through the circuit, I'm going to be doing bicep curls. The second time through the circuit, I will be doing hammer curls. The third time through the circuit, I will be doing reverse curls. And then I'm gonna do that for um, rounds four, five, and six. Round four, I'll do bicep curls. Round five, I'll do hammer curls. And round six, I'll do reverse curls, okay? So that's how I'm incorporating those three different curl variations. But that's part one. So if you want to do just part one, that's fine. It's a great workout all on its own. And actually it's almost identical to one of my earlier workouts that I shot last year. Um, and that was the whole workout. I did a little extra cardio afterwards, but the workout itself was just those six exercises, six reps of each, six times through the circuit. It took me a little under 20 minutes and it was a great standalone workout. So you can just do part one if you don't have a lot of time today, that's totally fine. Um, if you wanna continue on with me, there's two more parts. So let me show you the exercises we're doing in part two. So for part two, we're doing just three body weight exercises. You will not need any dumbbells. We're not lifting anything, but you will need a mat or a towel, something that you can lie down on comfortably for our ab exercise. So the first exercise is going to be a jump squat plus a side lunge and a heel lift. So it's a little combo. So starting with our squat jump, um, with your squats, remember that, again, you want your shoulders back and down, chest lifted high, core engaged. So tighten up those abs. And again, you want to visualize trying to touch the wall behind you with your booty. So really push that booty back. That's going to help keep the back flat and the weight in your heels, which is what we want. And then from this position, you can sink down into your squat. Now from here, you're going to press the ground away and jump up. Okay, so squat and jump. From there, you're going to go into a side lunge. So I'm going to step one foot out to the side. And again, shoulders are back and down, chest high, core is engaged. Abs are tight, pushing the booty back, trying to touch this gate behind me with my booty, keeping my back flat and the weight in the heel of this lunging foot. And then from here, I'm just gonna lift the heel and then stick back down into my lunge, return to my starting position. So that's one rep. We're going to be alternating sides with each rep. So now let me put it together a little faster so you can see what it looks like, and I'll show you on the other side. So squat, jump, now lunge to the other side, lift the heel, and return to the starting position. Okay, six reps, alternating sides with each rep. The next exercise is a little burpee variation. So again, it's a combination of several different moves, but I'm going to start standing in a neutral position. I'm gonna come down, place my hands on the ground in front of me, jump my feet back so that I'm in a plank position. If you need to step your feet back, that's fine. You can step them back. Now I'm going to do a push up. So remember to keep your body in one straight line from your heels to your shoulders. I'm going to rotate into a side plank and I'm going to bring this top hand behind my head. Hips are high. Now I'm gonna dip the hips. So drop my uh, bottom hip down till it touches the ground, lift it back up. And now I'm gonna do a little oblique knee tuck. So this foot that's behind is gonna come underneath and through. And I'm going to bend over and tap the knee with my elbow and then return to my side plank, return to my plank position, jump the feet in, and now I'm gonna do a little twist jump. So I'm going to jump up, and as I jump up, I'm going to twist so that I'm facing in the opposite direction. All right, that's one rep. We'll be alternating sides with each rep, so we'll put one together a little faster so you can see the flow of it. Hands come down, jump the feet back, push up, rotate into your side plank, Drop the hip, oblique knee crunch, back into your plank position, jump the feet in, and twist jump. Now, how to make sure that you are alternating sides on that is very simple. Every time I do my twist jump, I am making sure that you're never looking at my booty. You're always looking at the front of me as I jump and twist around to face the other way. 
And the same thing when I'm doing my side plank, you're never looking at my booty while I'm in the side plank. Sorry if you wanted to look at my booty, but that's not happening. We're doing it this way so that I'm always facing you while I'm in my side plank. So then when I'm facing in this direction and it's time to do my twist jump, again, you're not gonna be looking at my booty, you're gonna be looking at the front of me as I twist around. So making sure that the front of your body is always facing the same way means that you're going to make sure you're not just twisting in a circle, but you're doing an even number of jumps, twisting in a clockwise motion as well as twisting in a counterclockwise motion. It's a small detail, but I like to make sure everything's even and then making sure that um, you're always facing the same way on your side plank will ensure that you are doing an even number of side planks on each side. Okay, so that is exercise number two. Um, again, we're doing six reps and we're alternating sides with each rep. Final exercise is ab splitters. So for this one, you're going to need an exercise mat or a towel or maybe a blanket, something that you can lie down on comfortably. Um, if you're working out on a carpeted floor, you might not need anything, but if you have an exercise mat or yoga mat, you'll wanna grab that for sure. So these ab splitters are really tough. They're basically like three ab exercises in one. So they're quite taxing, but basically you are going to start by doing a jackknife or a pike. I always call it a pike. I think most people call it a jackknife or a V up but I have my legs straight and my arms extended overhead. I'm going to lift my legs, keeping my knees more or less straight, and I'm going to lift my upper body at the same time and bring my hands to touch my feet so it will look like this. Okay, so you're coming up like a V. Um, if that is too difficult, it actually makes it a lot easier to lift your legs first and then come up and touch the toes then return up, bring your arms back down and then bring your legs back down. So you're doing the same thing, but you're doing the legs and then the arms and it just makes it a bit easier. So if you can't do the V up or the pike or the jackknife portion, you can break it up and lift the legs first. But after we do our pike, now we're going to do a little straddle stretch. So I do this little straddle stretch and then bring my hands down to touch the mat and then bring the feet back together. And again, return to your starting position. And then the final exercise, the final part of the exercise rather is a little heel tap. So I'm gonna bend the knees and sit up and bring my hands on the side to tap the heels on the outside. And all three of those put together is one rep of ab splitter. So all put together, it looks like this. Touch the toes, straddle stretch, and touch the heels. That's one rep. Pike, straddle, heels. Okay, that's two. So um, those are ab splitters. Like I said, it's really tough. We're doing six reps, which is really kind of like 18 reps. So do your best. But that's part two. We're doing, doing those three exercises, six reps of each exercise, but this time we're only going through the circuit a total of three times, not six. So that's part one and part two. So again, if you want, you can stop there. That will be a great workout on its own. I'm going to be adding on a part three, which is just jump rope. So I am going to be doing 60 sets of 60 with my jump rope. When I say a set of 60, one rep of jump rope, when I say one rep of jump rope, I mean one revolution of the rope. So when I say a set of 60, I'm talking about counting 60 revolutions of the jump rope. So 60 revolutions of the rope is one set and we'll be, we're going to be doing 60 sets just like that. So it's gonna take me somewhere in the neighborhood of hopefully less than 30 minutes. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go for somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes. So if you don't have a jump rope, you can eliminate the jump rope portion and that's fine. If you want to include the cardio, the additional cardio, but you don't have a jump rope, then 20 to 30 minutes of any type of cardio exercise you wanna do is totally fine. So if you have an elliptical or a treadmill or an exercise bike or something like that, you can hop on one of those for 20 to 30 minutes. You could go for a hike or a run or a bike ride. Okay, so um, if you could shadow box, you could jog in place. If you have a heavy bag, you could work on your heavy bag for somewhere between, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 minutes 
um, whatever works for you. But basically, the cardio section is going to take me hopefully under 30 minutes, but somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 30 minutes-ish. So um, if you don't have a jump rope, but you want to include the cardio, 20 to 30 minutes of any type of cardio exercise you want to do is totally fine. If you are jumping rope with me, any style of jump rope you want to do is totally fine. I always just kind of jog in place like this while I'm jumping rope. But by all means, if you're more comfortable jumping with your feet together, jump with your feet together. If you're amazing at jump rope and you want to do something more challenging, feel free. You can do high knees or jump rope jacks, twist jumps, jump side to side. Any jump rope variation you want to do is fine. The only important thing is that way we are counting revolutions of the jump rope, 60 sets of 60, and that's part three. Hopefully I covered everything. Please remember that I always take the time to type out the instructions in the description box down below the video, and you're going to watch me do it right now. So watch me do it, read the instructions, and then of course, as always, if anything is unclear about the format, how it all fits together, if you have any questions about the specific exercises we are doing today, any doubts at all about how to do them with the correct form, or if you need to see beginner modifications or equipment-free substitutions, please just ask. It is very important that you understand how to do the exercises with the correct form before you begin the workout so that you reduce your risk of injury and so that you ensure that you're getting the maximum benefits out of each exercise. So if you have any doubts about how to do the exercises correctly, I'm right here to help. Please just ask. And it is also extremely important to me that all of my workouts are always accessible to anyone and everyone who wants to do them with me. I am always here to help facilitate that. So please don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions or if you need help with beginner modifications or equipment-free substitutions. I'm always here to help with that. So now you've seen all the exercises, you know what we're doing. If you are ready to go ahead and start this workout with me, go ahead and grab a set of dumbbells or two if you have them. If not, household items, shampoo bottles, water bottles, cans of soup, get creative and use what you've got. Grab a yoga mat or an exercise mat or a towel if you have one. Grab your jump rope if you have one. And if you are jumping rope with me today, take a minute to make sure you're good and warmed up. And when you're ready, let's get started. My goal is to hopefully finish this entire workout in under one hour, but please remember if you are working out along with the video, two things. Number one, go at your own pace. And number two, please never sacrifice your form for speed. Okay, so make sure you're prioritizing your proper form. If you are stronger than I am and you are able to finish the exercises more quickly than I am without losing anything off of your form, by all means, go faster than I'm going, that's great. If you finish the exercise or the section of the workout um, ahead of me, you can always skip ahead in the video. If you are slower than I am, that's also fine. Please work to your own level and go at your own pace. So if you need to take longer rest breaks than what I'm break than what I'm taking, or if you're just moving more slowly than I am, that's totally fine. If you need to pause the video until you catch up, then pause the video and once you're caught up or once you're ready to continue and you feel that you have enough strength to continue with the correct form, you can start the video again. Okay? So my goal is to finish in under an hour, but Please make sure you're working at your own pace and don't sacrifice your form for speed. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and get started. My watch is going, starting my timer, and we are starting with six renegade row push-ups. So push-up on the dumbbells, row and row. Push-up, row, row, that's two. Three, four, five, and six. Now bent over rows. So stand up, hinge at the hips, bend the knees, and roll the weights. One, two, three, four, five. Six, double peewees. So tuck wits behind, tap them in front. It's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Curls, I'm starting with bicep curls, six reps. 
One, two, three, four, five, and six. Arnold press. So bring the weights up to the shoulders, press them up overhead, squeeze them together in front. That's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Last exercise is tricep overhead press. One, two, three, four, five, and six. That's round one, we're doing six rounds. So as soon as you're ready, let's start round two with another six running knee row push-ups. Next is bent over rows, six reps. Double peewees, six reps. This is round two, I'm doing hammer curls this time. Six reps. Arnold press, six reps. And tricep overhead press, six reps. That's round two. Ready? Let's start round three. Six running knee row push ups. Six reps. <sighs> Curl. 
curls. So this time through, I'm doing reverse curls. Exercise is tricep overhead press, six reps. That's round three, so we are halfway through with part one. We have to do three more rounds. Just need to shake out my hands for a second. All right. If you need a longer rest break, pause the video, come back when you are ready. I'm gonna go ahead and start round three. So starting again at the top with six renegade row push-ups as soon as you're ready. Here we go. Kiwis. Six reps. Curls, whatever curl variation you're doing. I'm cycling through bicep curls, hammer curls, and reverse curls. For this round, I'm doing bicep curls. Two, three, four, five, and six. My hands have a hard time gripping the dumbbells for so long without a break. Arnold press, six reps. One, Two, three, four, five, and six. Last exercise, tricep overhead press. One, two, three, four, five, and six. That's round four. Just two more rounds to go. Shake up those hands, stretch the fingers as soon as you're ready. Let's start round five.
tricep overhead press. Remember if two weights is getting too heavy, you can switch to one. You can drop to a lighter set of weights. Reverse curls. One, two, three, four, five, six. Arnold press. Good 
took me 16 minutes and 24 seconds. And I actually think that that all alone is a, gr a really great standalone workout. So if that's all you have time for today, or if that's just all you wanna do today, you have my blessing. That was a fantastic workout all on its own. You can do your bonus burpee, take a good 15, 20 minutes to stretch, and then you can go have your shower, eat some lunch, get on with the rest of your day. If you are continuing on with me, part two is going to be shorter. We are only doing three exercises instead of six, and we're only doing three rounds instead of six, okay? It's gonna to be tough, but it's gonna be much shorter. Body weight only. So we're all done with the weights. The only thing you're going to need is a mat for our ab splitters, okay? Just giving myself a good two minutes or so to rest and recover because I want to, once I start this part two, I wanna um, get it done as quickly as I can. So I'm giving myself a couple of minutes before we begin. It's been a little under two minutes. So if you need a longer rest break, again, you can pause the video, go towel off, get something to drink, let your heart rate come down a little bit more, shake it out. And when you feel that you have enough strength that you can continue, um, without losing anything off of your form. You can come back when you're ready. We're gonna get started on round two right now, or part two, I should say. So this is um, starting with our squat jump and side lunge heel up combo. So we're doing six reps and we're alternating sides with each rep. Okay, so shoulders back and down, chest high, tighten up those abs, strong, tight, engaged core. Make sure you're pushing your booty back keeping the weight in your heels and keeping your back flat. Squat, jump, lunge to the side, lift the heel, return to the starting position, that's one. Squat, jump, lunge, lift the heel, that's two. Three, four, Five, last one. And six. Next is our hip dip burpees. So push up, dip the hips, oblique knee tuck, jump the feet in, and twist jump. That's one. Push up, dip the hip, oblique knee tuck, jump the feet in, and twist jump. That's two. One little roly poly. Okay, we're going to six. twist jump on that final rep. It's part of the exercise. So now ab splitters. Six reps. Do your best. Six of these is really tough. Okay, so when you're ready, here we go. So pike, straddle, and heels.
that's six. And that's round one. All right, so we're a third of the way through part two. We just have to do that twice more. So everything's cut in half. We're still doing six reps of everything, but it's three exercises instead of six, three rounds instead of six, okay? So as soon as you're ready, let's start round two. Shoulders back and down, chest high. Core is engaged, push the booty back, keep your back flat, weight in the heels, here we go. Next is our hip dip burpees. Hip dip with an oblique knee crunch. And a twist jump. So many things. But it's only six reps. Okay, as soon as you're ready, here we go. Round two, just one more round to go. If you have little weak link ab muscles like I do, they're crying right now. All right, round three, this is our final round. Let's push.
burpees. Hoping to finish this part two in under 10 minutes. It's gonna be a little over 10 minutes, but that's okay. We're almost there. Just six more ab splitters. So I didn't stop my timer because I'm timing the whole thing, parts one, two, and three, all as one big long workout. But parts one and two combined, including the downtime in between, took me 29 minutes and 40 seconds. So I did keep it under half an hour. That means that I want to meet my goal of finishing the entire workout in under an hour. I need to be able to complete this jump rope section in under 30 minutes. So that may or may not happen. We'll see. I'm going to do my best. If you are not doing part three, whether that's jump rope or some other type of cardio, you might want to do another three rounds of that last circuit. Um, if that's all you're doing for your workout today, that's up to you. But if I was not doing this part three, I would do that circuit another three times. So I would do six rounds of the dumbbell circuit and then six rounds of the bodyweight circuit and call that my workout. That's up to you. Either way, if you are not continuing on with me, thank you. I hope you enjoyed the workout. Please remember to do your bonus burpee. Don't skip your stretching and then you can go shower, have some lunch, get on with the rest of your day. If you are continuing on with me, we are going to do part three, which is going to be another, hopefully just 20 to 30 minutes of additional moderate paced cardio. So I'm going to be jumping rope. You can jump rope with me if you want to. If not, you can do 20 to 30 minutes of any other type of cardio exercise you want. So 20 or 30 minutes on the elliptical or the treadmill or the exercise bike, or you can go for a bike ride or a jog in real life. Um, you can go for a swim or a hike, uh, anything you want to do. Um, if you are jumping rope with me, any variation of jump rope you want to do is fine. The only important thing is that we are counting revolutions of the jump rope. We're doing 60 sets of 60. So do your best. I'm at just about 32 minutes right now. So I only have less than 28 minutes to complete this if I want to meet my goal of finishing the entire workout in under an hour. So wish me luck. We're doing sets of 60. So counting 60 revolutions of the jump rope. So you're going to count like this. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, thirty, forty, fifty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, sixty. So that's one set. Just gonna mark a little slash on my paper so I can keep track of how many sets I've done. I'm gonna do that 59 more times. So it's gonna get a bit tedious without music. So if you wanna play some music, that's fine. I have a really hard time counting my reps while I'm listening to music, so I don't listen to music, but whatever works for you. But we're gonna do another 59 sets of 60, so do your best. Here we go, set number two when you're ready. six for me and 10% of the way there. Have to do all that nine more times. So here we go. Set number seven when you're ready.
One more. And we'll be finished with our first 10 sets out of 60. sets if you need it but we have a lot to go still so I'm gonna keep pushing for as long as I can so we're starting set number 11 now I forgot I was supposed to stop at 60, so it's all right. 
An extra 20 reps of jump rope never hurt anyone. Not as far as I know anyway. It may have, who knows. But it didn't hurt me today, it's fine. All right, set number, uh, what is it, 18? or something so I shouldn't have said that so uh, what's the word <laughs> such a bold declaration so as to say that an extra 20 reps of drum rope never hurt anyone because I'm sure at some point it probably did. So I retract my statement. All right, that was set number 20. Let's keep pushing. If you need to rest, when we get to the halfway point, you can rest, but if you can, let's keep pushing until we get there. Another six sets. Set number 
25. See if you can keep pushing through for another five sets with me. adapt. I need to adjust. So I'm going to make it my new goal to finish in under an hour 10. I think that should be doable. So that gives me another 20 minutes. Let's make it under an hour 15. Let's really push. I mean, under an hour five rather. <laughs> I can't get some I'm going to finish it, try to finish. So that gives me only 15 minutes to complete this, these last, uh, 30 sets of 60. So I'm gonna to have to really, really push. If you need to take a longer rest break, pause the video, come back when you're ready. We have to do 30 more sets of 60. So I'm gonna to try to really pick up the pace and see if I can finish in under an hour and five minutes, okay? Do your best. Here we go, second half.
over your jump rope, that's fine. You do not have to start the entire set of 60 over from scratch. Just take a deep breath and get right back into it as soon as you can. Pick up your count where you left off, okay? That was set number 54. that we 
everything we were done. Of course, that was at 62. It was 40. That's 43. Oh my God, stop trying to count and just jump rope. We're still under an hour. Let's keep pushing. We're getting there. Let's keep pushing. sets to go. We're still well under an hour five. Let's keep pushing.
Still under number five. Let's keep pushing. extra reps. It's okay. It doesn't matter. That was set number 58. Just two more sets. tough workout 
And um, I'm really happy with what I got done today. So next time I do this workout, I'll try to do it faster than 108.51. But for today, that is my official score. So if you did this workout with me today, please comment with how long it took you. We are not quite finished yet. No workout of mine is ever complete until we have done our bonus burpee. So we have just one rep left to go. But first, it is time for the McFlurry Minute. I'm going to reset my timer to count down 60 seconds for me. I'm going to complete as many revolutions with my jump rope as I can, and if I can make it through the entire 60 second work interval without tripping over my jump rope, everybody wins a free McFlurry. So give me just a minute to reset my timer. I will be right back. All right, my timer has been reset. Rebecca is ready to go. Rebecca is my adorable black jump rope with the little white skulls on the handles. And for those of you who have been asking me where I got my jump rope, this is from Double Under Wonder. This model is called Deadlift. I will put a link in the description box below the video. And now Rebecca is going to help me keep my streak of successful McFlurry minutes alive. We have a streak going of four in a row. So we're going for five in a row today. Wish us luck. We are starting as always with a 10 second rest interval. And with any luck, one minute from right now, we are all going to be eating ice cream for lunch. Here we go. shouldn't work. Participating locations only. Enjoy your ice cream on Rebecca and me. You're welcome. So now we have just one rep left to go. Let's do our bonus burpee together and then the workout will be officially complete. Final rep of the day when you're ready. Here we go. today. Thank you so much. Please let me know what you thought of it and how you did. Thank you to everyone who has been working out with me lately. And even if you're not doing the workouts, thank you for watching the videos. Thank you for liking and sharing the videos. Thank you so much for all of your wonderful and supportive and engaging comments. You guys are amazing. And it really does mean the world to me. Thank you to all of my new subscribers. If you are not subscribed already, please subscribe. And of course, a great big thank you to those of you who have been subscribed to my channel for years. Please know that I appreciate you all so very much. One final reminder that if anything is unclear with the format, if you have questions about the exercises we were doing today, any doubts about how to do the exercises with the correct form, if you need to see beginner modifications, please just ask. I am always here to help. That is gonna do it for today. But before I say goodbye, I have to say one final thank you to those of you who have been watching the videos all the way until the end and commenting with the secret code phrase of the day. 
So before I say goodbye, I will give you today's secret code phrase of the day. It is, I'm in a glass case of emotion. So if you are still watching this video, hello. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. Please let me know that someone is still watching by going down to the comment section and leaving me a comment that says, I'm in a glass case of emotion. That is gonna do it for today and I will see you all next time, bye.